We are up with the sun this morning, up at 5, and we are starting the engines at 5.30. So that way we can get down to the southern atoll, get through the pass by 12. Don't know if you can see it in my eyes or not, but not a lot of sleep. But it's a beautiful day. Early mornings are required when sailing the dangerous archipelago known as the Tuamotus. It's the largest chain of atolls in the world. And we're here in Fakarava setting sail for Tahanea. And the looming coral bombies and narrow passes, if poorly timed, can resemble a class five rapid. And many a ship have met their end sailing these waters. Spitting, spitting. But we have light winds and calm seas predicted today. Unfortunately, those winds are head on. And as every critic knows, catamarans can't sail upwind. It's the worst possible sailing angle. Or is it? So clearly we put the Genoa out. I didn't film it because I had to help do it. Nikki's downstairs in the bed trying to get the last of the internet so we can get a little video uploaded to YouTube and Instagram and stuff to tell people that we're going to be completely disconnected for the next week or so. It's kind of all hands on deck this morning. The pass is always fun because there's always that little rapidy area and it's actually really shallow. You couldn't see it very well because the sun's so low, but normally if the sun's really high, you can see straight down and you're like, ooh, that's skinny water. Okay, now we're heading out to sea. Oh my goodness, good morning. <laughs> oh, we're sailing at like 30 degrees. Okay, let's roll up that pitch sail. Okay. Hard work on this boat. Missed it. <laughs> oh yeah, we're gonna be here a while. We have a gap. Right. Oh. I don't think you're making, are you still making progress? I don't think your line's going anywhere. <laughs> hey, I'm spinning the thingy. All right. Can you make him unsafe? Okay. Oh, it is. Son of a... Bonita. Mayor Grace, can you get the, yeah. the fish flipper? I bring him up on deck and get that out of here. There we go. Nicely done. Hi! See you, dude. This guy is so vibrant. The color on top of his back. It's like neon blue. All right, let's go back to sailing. Okay. And fishing. Mahi, Mahi. Let's say the Mahi tune. <laughs> They're not a big fan of skipjack, so they don't keep uh, skipjack, but they love ahi. Mahi. I think there's a, probably a rhyme thing there. It's nice and safe. When they took it out, I was like, oh. <laughs> uh oh, we got boobies. Clearly, whoever said catamarans can't sail upwind have never sailed on an HH because we are sailing at 29 degrees, 29 people, and we are going seven knots of speed, and we've only got 9.8 knots of wind. Impressive. It is impressive. I, there's no way. So our leopard, we would not be sailing at 29 degrees. The most we could ever do was like, we could be pinching at 40, Yeah. you know, but it's, and it was always a little bit tricky to maintain. If we dropped to like 38 and then back to 40, we'd flog. But this, I mean, look at it. We're no flogging. We are moving along. We have nine knots 
of wind speed and we are going six and a half knots through the water at 29 degrees. I'm so impressed. You need to see this. I don't think people are going to believe me. I don't believe it. So this is what beating up wind on an HH catamaran looks like. Like champagne sailing, at least with, you know, 10 knots of wind and fairly calm seas. We are testing out Frank's pep wave install. What are we doing this morning, Frank? We are putting up a cellular antenna slash router that we are really excited about because being off grid is great but being off grid for days and weeks and a month and not being able to talk to your kids or communicate just kind of gets a little bit almost freaky so <laughs> this is a pep wave cellular dome i already have a cat 5e cable up there and we're hoping for the best We are 15.8, probably 16 miles away from the pass, which is where the tower is. I have two bars E, and I'm gonna try and play a video. This is just straight from the cell phone. YouTube won't load. Now I got one bar E. Okay, so that's now. Just, yeah, just regular cell phone. That's regular cell phone. So now I'm gonna tap into the Wi-Fi network, ticket Wi-Fi. The password is, Breaks the case. ABC ticket Wi Fi. Just log in. Anybody that comes all the way on here, you can have my EFG. <laughs> you guys are now up to a try. Now I'm connected to the Wi Fi. Look at that. Wow. Should I play one? That would mean that, that we could get it almost Played in place in Maki mode. Played instantly. Yeah. All right. Wow. Yeah. There you go. Uh, this is not sponsored. Yeah. But uh, so far, it is working. Cool. Twenty miles. <laughs> Twenty miles would be amazing. Twenty right? miles would be. To be yeah. able to use cell phone. Twenty miles offshore. Yeah. Awesome. So much like for disconnecting. It. I know, right? I like things that work. I thought we should do a little walk around the boat so that you can see and hear what it's like while we're underway. What, are, what was our speed when you just left the helm? Uh, seven knots. Well, I guess so. Why yeah. not? Look right there, yeah. 7.9 knots. So, 7.9 knots, beating up wind. Two to so feet seas. Yeah, two to, yeah, so what? A meter. One and a half meter. One meter. Yeah, one meter. I shouldn't try to do the Down into our cabin. Yeah, this is what it's like in the aft cabin. It's still pretty quiet. You can hear the water, but it's not loud. Definitely sounds louder in the shower because there's no bed. <laughs> oh, Mom, when do you get that view out of a shower? The forward cabin is definitely the noisiest because you can hear the most up here, but it's still not a lot. Get us free. Boring cabins are always the noisiest. Like that's where the bow is dipping in and you get that little bit of spray, but still all things considered. Pretty quiet. It's still pretty quiet, yeah.
Where's he trying to eat the uh, fishing line? Look at him! <laughs> Dude, that game! tack to get a better angle that way we can sail into the atoll and we're about to tack back and he thinks we can throw out the reacher so that'll be the first time we've seen the sail it's supposedly this huge sail and uh, yeah should be uh, able to pick up a couple more knots of speed and get cruising straight into the atoll tacking Fish for me, baby. Here we go. We're gonna come down to screwing angle 70. Here we go. to 13 knots of true wind and we're doing about 10 to 11 knots of speed. Woo -hoo -hoo. Hard to hold the camera steady. Woo Just feeling it. This is like fun. I should probably go put my bathing suit on, but... <laughs> That's what I'm going to prep for. <laughs> I'll be back here. see what's ahead of me but I really have the instruments like right in line with my sight versus looking down at the chart plotter and looking up down up down up it's like right there 139 come on <laughs> hold the line hold the line I'm doing a sh terrible job <laughs> what are you supposed to be at so that way we can I'm all supposed to you. be at 139 and I keep going to 130 and 144 The crazy part is, it feels so comfortable. We're doing 10, 9.5 to 11.5 knots if I can keep it on course, we'd be doing 11. But it just feels so comfortable. Like it's, it's just not fine. biting me, it's yeah. not like I don't feel like we're going too fast. It doesn't seem overpowered, it's not loud. Everything just feels right. Except for my steering. <laughs> I also think a lot of that has to do with the fact that this boat can do double the speed that we're doing right now. It can easily do 20, 22, probably 24 knots. I don't know what the actual top speed is on this boat. And so we're not even remotely pushing right now. Not even close, but it's just fun. Barely sporting as far as sea conditions go, you know, and the movement of the boat, but it's exciting because you can feel the wind and you know that you're going not five knots, we'll say that. Yeah. 
we were just talking about, um, you know, each yeah. boat has like a, a max. Yeah. No, I don't know. I could tell you we've gone 28 knots. 28 knots. No way. Yeah, it was crazy. Did you fly a hull? Uh, we have flown a hull while we were, while we had all the perfect pros on board and before we loaded the boat down. Yeah. So. Is that when you did 28 knots or was that some other time? Um, no, I don't really think we were going quite that fast. It was just the amount of pressure when we were doing that. So the 28 knots was in the in Long Beach Harbor and we were just flying back and forth. It was amazing. Wow, that was, was great. Nuts. Yep. On our own, the fastest we've gone, I think, is 24. So just that's 24. Just 24. Yeah, just 24. No so. big deal. <laughs> yeah. you know. But it's not something we do every day. Definitely not something we do every day. You gotta have good conditions and good crew. Yeah. Somehow, I don't think we'll probably get the right conditions to do 28. But if we got anywhere even remotely close to that, I don't know what that feels like. Fifty-five miles in basically a morning. That's not bad. Super sweet. Upwind too. Really sweet. That is the Frank Stitch flanking method. Move the boom back and forth. So we started this when we were in Alaska because there were so many passes that we just weren't sure of. So you get to sing with me, you ready? Okay, great. And you have hands in this. So deep and wide. Oh, deep, deep and wide. Where are we? Tanea passes deep and wide. <laughs> <laughs> we used to do this every pass we went into. And the one time we didn't, we ended up with two feet underneath our feet. So from now on, we, it's a ritual and yeah. it must be done. It must. Are you ready? Okay. It's really challenging. Can you remember the words? I, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Ready? Okay. Deep and wide, deep and wide. Tanea passes are deep and wide. <laughs> Lucky socks, lucky underwear, toss a penny, sink Do deep and wide, whatever you gotta do. you're wondering why they're putting on the cocolates, right? That's what you call them. Yeah. <laughs> that is because there are coral heads all around here. So if you float your chain, you don't drag it across all of the coral. We've gotten a lot of questions about floating the chain. So here's the scoop. Anchoring in or near coral is a safety risk to both the boat and the coral. Coral is hard and it can seriously beat up the anchor chain. And if it gets wrapped around a coral head, it shortens the scope and the spring effect that absorbs the load when a gust of wind or a swell hits. If the wrapping shortens the chain too much, it can easily rip out a cleat, bow roller, or windlass. And then there's the coral. Damaging coral is bad. I mean, there's a lot of life down here. And it creates animosity with the locals and gives all boaters a bad reputation, which is a fast track to anchoring bans. And so, to avoid all of this, we float the chain. It takes about 30 minutes to drop the anchor, unfortunately, when you have those floats. It's a process, but it's definitely worth it. Here we go. Wonderful. He just has to check the anchor. Best job on the boat. 
Is that the secret sign? That's the secret sign. If you see the happy duck feet, we're in good shape. <laughs> now, I am ready to go jump in there. Today we went 62.5 miles. Our average speed was eight knots and our max speed was 12.4. I think our highest wind speed was around 15 and usually it was what, 12? Yeah, something like that. 12-ish. Not bad. No, especially with tight wind angles. Yeah. Yay. Nice upwind sail on a light wind day. Yeah. Been waiting to say that one. Never that thought a, I would that hear that. The bottom. <laughs> All my little white hairy stuff is gone. Oh. That's nice. That sounds like a joke right now. <laughs> With a head as big as my head. It's hard to tell underneath the water, I know, but he's like huge. It's been interesting to be on this boat, obviously just because we are going to get an AGH ourselves and I feel like I'm looking at it with such a scrutiny, you know? There's just so many details from every level of like, am I missing something? What should I take note of from this vessel that I might want to add to our boat or not have in our boat, which there's not really much of anything <laughs> that I wouldn't want to add. It's more like, what all do I want to add to our boat? The thing is, we're just not going to have a lot of these options. This is semi-custom, so they got to do so much of their design completely tailored to exactly how they're going to use the vessel. And luckily, the 44 is pretty much set up ideally how we would want it to be set up, which is also another reason that we decided to buy a new boat, which was kind of a big jump for us. But anyway, it's just been, there's so many little details and just the fit and finish of this boat is beyond incredible. I love the way that it sails. I like the little niceties and touches to everything. It's just, they really put a lot of time into this boat. And I mean they, I mean like HH and building it, but also Frank and Mary Grace and just thinking through how they wanted their space to be. And that's just such a unique experience because I haven't been on any other vessel where somebody hasn't had to redo a space for them. Everything on this boat is exactly the way they wanted it to be. And it's really cool to see. And it just, it feels like such a privilege to be on this boat. And I feel like I'm just kind of now 
settling into that, like soaking it all in really like I'm finally here. It's funny it's taken this long, but <sighs> here we are. And now we're off to go dive again. Good night, guys. Good night. What time is it? It's 8.51. 8.51, and we are just passed out, exhausted. We've been waking up with the sun at about 4.45, 5.15, and just going and blowing all day, snorkeling and exploring. Oh my gosh, it seems so crazy. Just exhausted. It's Nine o'clock and I'm like, okay, go to bed. <laughs> night, night now. Night everybody, I'm gonna shave tomorrow. I'm gonna shave tomorrow. No, no, I'm gonna shave tomorrow. Uh, oh, God. Okay. But now I'm really gonna brush my teeth. Yeah. Okay. Good night.